So back in early 2017, I posted this video titled 100% Global ADS-B Aircraft Tracking is Coming Soon. And this was in response to claims made by flat earthers regarding flights in the Southern Hemisphere. Specifically flights like Qantas 27, which operates non-stop between Sydney, Australia and San Diego, Chile. We have a number of free tracking sites available, FlightAware being one of them, and as the Flat Earthers point out, the aircraft is not tracked for the entire route. Once it has moved more than a few hundred miles from land, the tracking drops off on these websites. And because of that, they believe something fishy is going on in the middle of the ocean. But what the Flat Earthers fail to understand is that the reason the aircraft cannot be tracked in the middle of the ocean is because they rely on a technology known as ADS-B. And back in 2017, that was primarily based on ground-based receivers. Let's have a look at the ADS-B video on the Air Services Australia website. And Air Services Australia provide the air traffic control services within Australian airspace. ADS-B technology uses GPS satellites to pinpoint an aircraft's location. Information including the aircraft's exact position is then transmitted down to the nearest ADS-B ground station twice every second. The ground station receives the aircraft's signal and retransmits the data via a ground-based link or by a satellite connection directly to Air Services Air Traffic Control Centres. So I'll post a link to this page in the description below, but ADS-B is a system in which electronic equipment on board an aircraft automatically broadcasts the precise location of the aircraft via a digital data link. The data can be used by other aircraft and air traffic control to show the aircraft's position and altitude on display screens without the need for radar. ADS-B stands for Automatic Dependent surveillance broadcast. So anyone can purchase a simple ADS-B receiver like this Stratus 2S, which also has a built-in GPS and a backup attitude heading reference system. You can see as I roll the device left and right, pitch up and down, the corresponding attitude indication on the artificial horizon in the ForeFlight app. Removing that part of the display, we now have a map with a series of icons depicting the aircraft in the area. And by clicking on any of those icons, we see additional information. There is Virgin Australia. The aircraft is heading 013 degrees with a speed of 258 knots and currently showing an altitude of 14,975 feet. We can click on a different aircraft and this is Qantas Airways heading 171 degrees with a speed of 355 knots. You can see the data is coming from 1090 ADS-B and as I said is coming directly from each aircraft to this ADS-B receiver. Now I got my pilot's license in the early 80s and obviously at that time we didn't have technologies such as ADS-B in fact, most of Australia did not even have radar coverage. So on a long trip between Perth and Sydney, we would have to make a number of position reports by voice over the radio. And the position report would notify ATC of our time at a specific waypoint, our cruising altitude and our estimate for the next waypoint. And we might have to do a dozen position reports in a four hour flight to Sydney. With the advent of radar and later ADS-B, those position reports are no longer required because the aircraft is providing them electronically to ATC. So we've been operating with ADS-B in Australia for many years and when the aircraft is within line of sight of a ground-based receiving station, it works well. However, operating over the oceans, beyond line of sight, you lose that capability and that is the reason why these aircraft on the non-stop southern routes are not able to be tracked on programs such as FlightAware. They move beyond 
the line of sight capability of the ADS-B system and therefore they are no longer being tracked. But in 2019, in addition to the ground-based ADS-B receiving stations, we now have space-based ADS-B, where a series of satellites each have an ADS-B receiver, and that provides us with 100% global flight tracking. If you go to the FlightAware website, the ADS-B tab, and scroll down to Arion Space-Based ADS-B, you can see more information about the system, including a video describing how it works. So obviously this is very bad news for flat earthers, particularly those trying to claim that the one more orbit flight did not go over the South Pole. If you go to the FlightAware site, click on the coverage map and then go to data coverage, what you see are the various different feeds that provide the aircraft tracking. If you click on this link, Arion Space Based ADS-B only, we will see the tracks obtained by the satellites. And if you zoom in, you can see this aircraft operating from Mauritius, going directly south until it hits the bottom of the map. Now remember, this is a Mercator-style projection, so the entire bottom of the map is a single point at the South Pole. And there it is, all the way to the South Pole. So it was accurately tracked with the Arion space-based ADS-B system. The bottom of the map, now if we scroll out, go across to South America, we can see the aircraft coming up from the bottom of the map, directly north and landing in Punta Arenas. So on the FlightAware website, we see that the Arion space-based ADS-B system did in fact confirm that the one more orbit aircraft flew over the South Pole. So I'll post a link to this site in the description below, but remember it is a weekly summary, so the one more orbit track will likely disappear within a few days. Please check it out before it does, and remember after that, the site will continue to display the non-stop flights in the Southern Hemisphere, such as QF27 and QF63, which is Sydney to Johannesburg. So again, this Arion space-based ADS-B tracking is yet another nail in the coffin for Flat Earth. I think there are more nails than coffin at this stage.